expectations coming to this were, um, I didn't think it would be anywhere near as accurate as what happened to me. I have no control over who shows up, and if the people that you do want to hear from do come through, I have no promise that they're going to tell you what you're expecting to hear. Mm -hmm. I'm Tom Jack. Uh, I own a nightclub in Manhattan called the Spiral Lounge. Tom, the first thing that's being shown to me is a male figure who's crossed over, like a father-type figure, which me would indicate that your dad has crossed over. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so your dad has passed. Yes. All righty. Your dad is. I was amazed he got off to it so quickly. Also pointing to his chest. And at first, I was like, okay, this could be something. something. Like this is what causes his passing. There's like an explosion in the chest. You got a heart attack. Okay, because I feel like there's like a big explosion that happens here. He's telling me to let you know that he's okay. Some of the smaller things, you know, he said my father had an explosion in his chest. My father did die of a heart attack. I believe this is coming from your mom. Is she the one with the cancer? Yeah. Okay. Because she tells my me mother that. did die of cancer. I never told him that. He told me that. That the month of April has a meaning to her. It's my birthday. It's your birthday. Okay. Well, is she trying to tell me she passed by your birthday and that's a celebration? No. Now she's also telling me to talk about being out of state or upstate. I don't feel like you're in the area that I would know you from. So, are you not from New York or is there? No, I'm not from New York. Okay. Now, do you have a sister? Yeah. Is she getting married? No. Is there a marriage that took place for her after your mom passed? Uh, yeah. Your mom's telling me that after her, pa after her passing, she went to yes. a wedding. Yes. She's telling me to tell her. <laughs> really? She was at the wedding. There was points where I had to just laugh because there's no way he could have known these things. Um, and there was other points where I really felt like I felt an energy in the room. I felt the presence of people in the room. Or, or not people, but I felt the presence of something in the room that wasn't there before we started. Now, is there another brother besides you? Yeah. Okay, because now she's telling me she's bringing her, your brother with her. She's bringing your brother through. Why is there so much green around him? Was he like in Ireland or Scotland? Where was he? <clears throat> no, it was in Canada, but it was in a rural area. He's showing me like green all around him. He is telling me to tell you that he is okay. I do want to tell you that I feel like his passing happens very, very fast. Um, it is at the hands of somebody else, though. You're aware of that? There was some mystery surrounding my brother's death. And again, this is a trauma to the head from what he shows me that causes his passing. Is that what they told the you? The police had said it was an accident. Um, he'd been found on the side of a road, his body very badly mutilated. Well, I'm getting it back here. As if he'd been run over many times, and that was the official explanation. I just have this, like, attack feeling. Like, there's, like, a riotous feeling around me. There, there is talk about this as being something that is unique and freaky, is my feeling, about how he passes. Um, and that there are unanswered questions. And then when he came through and said, your brother wants to tell you that the story that you've been told about his death isn't true. He passed is not what you know. And that you don't really have the opportunity to investigate it in the way that you want because you're stopped. I mean, like, literally, I feel like there's a cement wall that comes up and says, can't go there. Uh, I was totally shocked because how would anybody know that? That was like 26 years ago. How would anybody know that there was even any mystery involved? That was in a different country at a different time. They're stepping back. When they step back, that's the way of, of cutting their ties with me. Just please. So I've taken away a lot from this, and it's, you know, you could say it was life-changing. Two. Two, three, three four, and one. Two. two People four, started coming through to me one. in 1987 two, from the other one. side, which I had no idea what that was or what was going on. But it was all information that was being validated by my clients about their dead relatives. I was basically born and raised in a small town called Glen Cove, New York. Um, Irish and Italian descent. A very uh, clear experience for me was seeing what I refer to as my little old man friend. And this gentleman would come through, usually in my dreams, and um, he would tell me things. And then I would relate him to my family. But um, nobody ever said, oh, that's not happening, that's not possible, you can't do that. Nobody put a limitation on, on the ability. So I just started doing research and going to the local library and trying to learn as much about psychic phenomena, parapsychology, metaphysics. And the more I learned about it, the more I realized my entire life I had always been doing it. And it was just something that I thought we all did. Sing ah. <laughs> Sing ah again. Initially, I wanted to, you know, open a deli and do that. And then I strongly had a desire to go into healthcare, of which I did. I have two degrees, healthcare administration and business administration. And I really thought, okay, well, that's my, that's where I'm going to be. That's what I'm doing. And I would just phase the psychic stuff out and I wouldn't do it anymore. It took until my mother's death in 1989 for me to realize firsthand, literally, how important it is to know that our friends and relatives are okay and that they're still with us. Okay, the first thing that's coming through is I have a male figure that's coming through, and I'm feeling that this person is above you. Above you to me would be your father or father figure, a father-in-law. Do you understand that? Is your biological father passed? Yes. Okay. Is her Aunt Frances' husband passed? No. Aunt Frances has a male figure to her side who's passed, which to me is husband or brother. And she's telling me there's a James... My name's Ann Skelton, live in Freeport, and I work at a restaurant. 
My name is Chris Kelton, and I, uh, and I work in the health field. They're telling me there's a child who's passed. They're telling me to talk to you about a child. I hope so. Okay, so you did lose a child? Yes. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, because oh. they're telling me there's a child that's been coming through for you. And when Liz died, it ripped my heart out, and I need, I need, I wanted some kind of closure on it. I had read some books about it, and uh, I, I had to come and find out something. Try and get some, some kind of message that she was okay. This is a very dominant feeling to me. My dominant feeling would indicate that this is masculine. Um, however, we can have a daughter coming through that's got a very strong energy attached to it. Well, one of the things when he, at first he was confused and said masculine because she was she was six one. First thing on the scene is my feeling, kind of like, and this big burst of energy, like he said, she felt like she was bursting in on the scene, and that's just how she entered every room. You know, she burst in and took over the whole room. Was there a miscarriage or no? no. There's, there's two children. There's two people younger than you coming through. No. They're, they're, they're telling me too that there's two there. Not two of my children. They're telling she's coming through with somebody to her side. That means to me that there is either a sibling to her or somebody that I would see directly on the same level as her who has passed. That's what's coming through. Yes. No. She's insisting. No. <laughs> I, don't you already, I never had another pregnancy. I'm telling you, you're going to be wrong. She's telling me that there is somebody directly to her side who was with her. Who had the vehicle accident? She did. Was it somebody who passed with her in the car? Yes. So she died with somebody else? Yes. Okay. Would this person be on the same level as her? Age group, you mean yes. 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 I have to say this. I feel like they're siblings. I have this kind of connection to them. There's a very... They there's sort a, of felt that way. There's a bond that's between them. Too. She was 16. She was traveling with a friend actually out in St. Louis in a car accident. Like I said, the girl who he referred to, who's, who's with Liz, died instantly in the accident. Liz survived for eight days out in St. Louis. So, and she's pretty feisty, so I, I, was gonna really, say, I don't I, think I, you. I don't really have to work too well because she's being pretty insistent. Yeah. She's telling me to tell you D, which either means that there's a D connection to her living. He made a reference to a D she's really close to. I'm like, I think they're all our friends and who I would expect her to say hello to. It's like, no, there's no D. And like Diane, Donna, Denise, there's a DN connection and I feel it close to me. So this is somebody that's close to her. So write that down. It's probably somebody who's alive who she's just putting out a hello to. Of course, her brother's name, my son's name is Daniel, you know, but it just, you know, while you're there, I guess, you know, your mind's racing through everything while you're talking to him or dealing with him. Now, did you have one picture of her in your wallet that you took out and then put in another one? Yes. Okay. She's telling me to tease you for doing that and that she liked the other picture better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Her hair was better in the other one. She's making me feel like she liked her hair was better in the other one. She's, she's laughing. She's excited. She's been memorialized on a wall. Somebody carved her name on the wall. She's up on a wall. Yep. Okay. She's thinking about being on the wall, and she's making me feel like there's gum near her. <laughs> yep. Cause she's like she's she's not taking it really serious. She's like joking around, saying like I'm up on the wall near the gum. Yep. One night I was. Uh, in, in a train station, and uh, I was very scared, and I was talking to my daughter, and uh, I actually wrote her name on a wall in pen and uh, put a heart around it. And uh, he, he made a reference to that. He also made a reference to the gum. There was a whole bunch of gum underneath. <laughs> so, I mean, he was right on the money. She's trying to keep this light. It's her way of keeping her personality intact and making sure that you you know that even though she's not physically with you, she's still spiritually connected to you. It's very important that you guys know this. It doesn't change anything. It's my daughter. But it's, a, it's a, you know, I mean, like, I, I believe before I came here that she was still with me, and I guess it just confirms that. She's there. That little handwriting on the wall <laughs> that uh, she... And I was really talking to her that night, you know? It was amazing. And he, he pulled that out of nowhere. That, that's... Nobody knew of that. So, I mean, it, it had to be. Hey, Chris, and it's John Edward. How are you? Good. What's cooking? But there is a business side. I mean, for me, there has to be a business side to this as far as focusing on what I'm doing and how I do it. There's a big demand for people that want me to do it. I, you know, unfortunately, that's the hardest part of this. 